it is quite tricky sometimes to draw trusses um, with purlins manually and I just want to demonstrate how one can go about that relatively easy in Revit. Uh, so looking at a roof plan of my model I can see that roof is a thick roof. I want to focus on this building over here. So for starters, if I have a large project and I want to draw a little roof somewhere, a good idea is to create a little section and then to call that section something like building one and then go to a default 3D view, right click on the view cube and orient to view, section building one now it is quite easy in 3D to work with that. It makes the orbiting nimble, especially on a large project. So what I'm going to do is, in South Africa we have certain timber sizes that we use. My lumber, 50 by 76, 50 by 114, 50 by 152, and 50 by 228. And I want to go and create a roof with some trusses and purlins over here. Just detaching the walls from the roof. That's great. Uh, no, missed a few. Let's quickly filter out the roofs, uh, the walls. Okay, detached top or base from the roof. There we go. Alright, so there we've drawn a roof by footprint and we want to put some trusses up to it this roof typically in South Africa also would have a slope of 26 degrees. To help me draw I need either some reference planes or grid lines. Uh, reference planes don't print when you draw them. Uh, you really should name these if you want to keep them permanently uh, and we can create them over here, ref plans. I'm going to create them on the 400 offset. So, so I should be having them here on the edge of the wall. Copy this down. onto the other wall. The advantage of doing that is if I go back to my sectional view I'll actually see these reference plans and I'll be able to attach the truss to it. You can work in a sectional view with a reference plan if you set it as the current working plan. In this case I'm going to hide in view element and I'm going to use instead a framing elevation. I'm just going to call this R1 and I'm going to come in with a framing elevation view. It's a great view because it's going to set the working plan automatically to R1 when I open this framing elevation I can see that it's already set that working plan to what is required the level will act to give me an intersection which I need where I need to draw this truss I've already loaded in a structural truss I'm going to use the six panel truss I'm going to draw it from this intersection to that intersection here. Switching out into a fine detail view, I can see that it's not lining up with the roof yet. So sitting on top of this truss is going to be some purlins of 76 mm thickness. And I want the roof truss to attach to the base of them. So what I'm going to do over here on the structure well, on the roof itself, I'm going to duplicate this and call it my dummy purlin roof. I'm 
and then the structure I'm going to change this out to 76 which is the same thickness as what my purlins are going to be Seventy six. Remember with the truss will send addition you can go into the type properties and set the lumber dimensions that is getting used or the sections that you will use to generate this truss. Trusses are nice and easy, you can just say attach top or bottom to the roof. Okay, so the problem over here is that I've put the reference plane at the wrong <laughs> on the edge of the roof so the truss won't see the top of the roof. Let's just move these. So I'm gonna move the I'm gonna move them all together to where they should be, which is close to this wall. And in fact, what I can do to this truss is offset it by half the thickness of the members. Lock it in place and then align to the reference plane the truss. What is the distance between the reference plane and the face of the wall? 85. Let's change that to. 25 half the thickness of the members and align to the reference plane the truss. There we go. So now it's right up against the wall. It's right up against the wall. Okay. Let's go back to my framing elevation and this time it should be quite an easy matter to attach the truss to the roof. That's not perfectly aligned to the roof. I'm going to rename this view after the section. The next step, what I want to do is I want to array these trusses so they are around about 900 millimeters apart. So I go back to my plan view. Right, so next I just want to copy this uh, reference plane across to the other side. So I've also got this close to the wall and I move it 25 millimeters away. <coughs> from the face of the wall. That is half the thickness of the truss. And now what I do is I drag this down so that these two points are horizontal aligned with each other. Now I'm going to array that reference plane, linear, group and associate. I'm going to guess the number because I want about a 900 spacing. I'm going to constrain it keep it horizontal from this end point to that end point. So it is. And I see what is the distance between them. It's too much. I want it around about 900. So I edit this. Let's go with 18. There. Okay. That is pretty much just what I want. 903. Right, so if you array these trusses, they lose the extension on the beam at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this now across the truss. I'm going to copy across multiple constraint, keep them horizontal. There's one, and it's a little bit of manual work, and so it goes across. You could 
a line and lock them. There we go. Next step is I need to cut them back to the fascia. And so I just copy this reference plan to the inside face of the fascia, one on this side, and one on this side. Go back to my plan view, and I start cutting geometry. Cut geometry, there we go. wrong reference plan let's use the right reference plan this time there we go just carrying this all around the building shouldn't take too long It's not the most efficient, but it works. Other options would be to uh, model the stress in place if you want more detail, or to create the extensions on a simple roof like this. But often you want to have total control and that would be an easier method. Great. So next I want to go play some Perlins. Let's just quickly have a look at this in 3D, see what it looks like. That looks good. Right. Let's go back to our elevation view. Create another reference plane the base of the uh, roof where the burdens must go and I can just name that burden one and then go back to my roof plan view and I set the working plane to Perlin 1 and then I go and draw a beam number dimensions reference plane it's all good 3D snapping off and I can draw this across like that and I know already that once it extends to the extended um, beam at the top, it's going to want to tell me it can't connect. So I'm going to say uh, right click on that item. Drag this longer onto the button there, onto the uh, fascia, disallow join, drag it back on, disallow join, and drag it onto the fascia. Great, so it's the right length now, and back in my elevation, I'm going to move this into position. I use a detail line. There we go. And I move this down into place. There it is. Then I can array it. Linear array. I 
guess the amount, about 8. And unconstrained, so I can array it at an angle. And then I can select them all. and mirror them across to the other side. There they go. Just looking at this in shaded, I can see that this dummy Perlin roof is still there. I can hide this within the view. And there I can see that doesn't look too bad. Let's have a look in 3D. Let's see the tin roof. Temporarily hide the tin roof and hide the dummy Perlin roof. And there we go. So this is now looking <coughs> this is now looking good. see what it looks like without the uh, tin roof as well. That looks good. Last little job is we need to attach the walls to the roof. So, I hope you can enjoy creating these uh, trusses with purlins if you need to. And remember that uh, you can attend training with micrographics, or you can also contract us if you need work like this done for you. Until next time. <laughs>